<laughs> okay, this is the uh, second of three uh, joint Board of Finance Board of Selectmen meetings uh, for the purposes of operating budget presentations. And uh, the first pres presentation tonight is the Police Commission and Animal Control. So whoever... Uh, one second, Matt. Yeah. We're going we're gonna, to uh, hold off on our budget presentation and um, the union wants to just uh, say something. Okay. If you, if you got time. Sure. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sergeant Brian McCarthy. I've been a member of this police department now for 24 years. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the, all the officers of the Woodbridge Police Union. We're all here tonight in support of the Chief's Office and their concern regarding the need to increase the number of officers in this department. We may differ from the Chiefs, however, in the number of officers that we need, that we feel are needed, and the reasons why. Like the lifeblood of any police department is the patrol division. Patrol is the 24-7 responders to all emergencies, the first line of defense in any dangerous situations, and unfortunately it's the last on the list when it comes to being provided with what they need to do their job safely and effectively. For the last 30 plus years, this town has been very fortunate in running a department that has a two-man minimum. And what this means is that at any given time, we can only have two officers on duty and supervisors are even, even included as part of that two-man minimum. Uh, these day, they, the days of the two-man minimum are far behind us. Uh, things are getting too dangerous out there. Times have changed and it's no longer safe for all officers or the community to run this way. When we're tied up handling one situation, that can mean that any other emergency may go unanswered for longer periods of time or that we might have to break one of those officers to go respond to the second emergency without any backup available to them at all. Operating under these conditions can be a great liability to the town. The responsibilities of this department have grown due to the changing times. We now have many additional duties that we need to be covered, which we have taken care of all these additional duties, but we're doing so without addressing where the bodies are coming from. The problem lies with how the positions are filled. We make sure that the jobs are done, but we have not had any manpower increases to address them. We're currently operating a patrol force with five fewer officers than we had 25 years ago when I began. We used to have a two officers um, running our investigative unit. Now, due to necessity and, and the way times have changed, the computer age that comes in, now we have two officers plus a supervisor. Right. We now have an officer assigned to the Statewide Narcotics Task Force, which is a position that is a necessary resource for this agency. We also have an accreditation officer now which, who is helping to keep all the state and federal requirements regarding rules, regulations, policy procedures, and all written orders, are, orders complete and accurate. So that's up to three less from the patrol division. Um, we recently had our civilian IT technician retire unexpectedly. This is a vital position that had to be filled immediately, and an officer was assigned to do that. Unfortunately, this was not only an officer which depleted our evening shift, but in this case, that officer is a supervisor. So the guys now on nights are running not only one less, but one less sergeant to, to oversee what goes on at night. Uh, the whole point of creating that extra sergeant position in the first place to work the 6 to 2 shift was to add the supervision, which we now have lost. And then finally, our most recent assignment was that of a full-time community police officer who was assigned to Beecher Road School in the wake of the shootings at Sandy Hook. We as a union completely agree with the, import with the important need for this position as protecting our children is the most important thing we can do. The issue with all of these necessary positions is that all the bodies were drawn from the patrol force. The needs have reduced our capabilities to respond to emergencies, protect our citizens, our schools, and even each other. Um, being a 24-hour type agency, time off is essential to the morale and the general well-being of, of the officers. Due to the need to work nights, weekends, and holidays, officers must be able to use their earned time off as needed. Although the department tries hard to accommodate all requests, they are often denied due to inad inadequate manpower. In order to accommodate these requests, junior officers are often moved around from shift to shift. Mm. This is unfortunate because although it gets the officers their time off that they request, it also causes even more shifts now to operate at the bare minimum of two. In the year 2014, we're going to have at least 10 officers that will be eligible excuse me, for retirement, and several of them do intend on moving on. At our current staffing levels, the loss of this many officers in one year could cripple the ability of this town to provide police services. The officers of this union completely support our chiefs and their desire to add additional officers. However, the police union is here to formally recommend the addition of at least two additional officers to the ranks of the Woodridge Police Department. And we thank you for whatever consideration you can give this matter.
Man, I, sure, I want to I want to thank the board for uh, allowing Brian to speak. Uh, something that I'm <coughs> probably going to bring up uh, with my budget presentation, but I think he did a nice job and he just sent the message to you. Um, although we didn't put in for any additional officers in this fiscal year, uh, we're going into the next fiscal year. Um, I thought it was it was good, and I had this discussion with uh, the finance director that it was a good opportunity, like the like the union said, to bring it to your attention, to open the door for discussion. Uh, you know, during this budget process, so the next year that you have a you know kind of a, a, a good handle on uh, you know what the, ch the changes that are going on with the department uh, throughout this year and until the, in, into the future. Uh, I mean, with with that said, I can just you know go right into you know our, our budget presentation. Um, what I like to do is just work off the the budget line justification summary if it, if it's okay. Uh, I don't know if what's easier for. It's just, I think it's a little bit more explanatory when we actually talk to about each of the lines. Um, does everybody, I, I assume everybody's got a copy of that budget presentation uh, or summary. Uh, right over to page two, most of those lines are all contractual. Um, and the increases that you see are, are uh, all come out uh, out of the new contract. Uh, uniform allowance being one of them, uh, going from 30,000 to 35,000. That I mean, that's based primarily on an increase of uniform allowance to the officers, as well as a a, uh, a new allotment to the dispatchers that was brought up in their their contract this year. Uh, you see a difference on the top of the page on page two, uh, overtime dispatcher. We, uh, we had a significant decrease in that, um, and that has a lot to do with we're going to be putting a, a new dispatcher on. Um, that's going to fill the position that technically was our IT tech that uh, Sergeant McCarthy had indicated in his brief uh, that we lost this year. Um, so that shows a significant decrease in, in that line. Uh, does anybody have any questions up until the, uh, like the middle of page two as far as any of the contractual lines? I mean, going further with that, uh, down at the bottom of page two, we have data processing. Um, also, as a result of our IT tech leaving, um, we had to contract out with Omni Data, who actually does the, the computer uh, <coughs> computers for the for the town. Um, it's going to be a, a an increase in that line of approximately eighteen thousand dollars. Uh, there's also another significant increase that I just found out last week from NextGen um, that they're going to be increasing theirs, that I didn't have that information when I originally did up the budget. So that's going to be going from thirteen dollars to $14,000. Um, so al although uh, those are increases I didn't know about, I, I think we probably will be able to make it with, with the 42000 Any questions on data processing? Okay. Well, more accurately, uh, it's 50430, the overtime one. The 120 for the current fiscal year, is that largely due to the storm? Exactly. All right. The that increase, in, and we're probably going to be seeing uh, replacement funds with that yeah. after I, I know that we just finished our FEMA right. paperwork today. Uh, I know that the previous fiscal year, I think it was probably in the area of a little over 30,000 yeah. we got back. Right. Uh, we also associate uh, uh, overtime comes back from the DWI roadblocks that we have. Uh, so, so again, to answer your question, yeah, it has a lot to do right. with the two storms that we had. Thank you. Any other questions for, for page two? Data processing is probably one of our bigger lines because that, that's, that's a lot of the equipment that we technically run the department with, a lot of our uh, computer aid dispatch. Uh, all our, our, our uh, support as far as that goes. Um, regional services uh, really didn't change. Uh, it was at 13.3, stated 13.3. Uh, we have a little bit of an increase um, in equipment parts, and that's due to uh, our Motorola contract. Actually went up about a six, little over $600. Um, we had, we had a, a new, other new line. Um, uh, BEI is a new line 
Uh, and that went from 1450 to just over $1,500 uh, for service on our uh, uh, recording system for our telephones and, and in dispatch. Um, page, page four, is there any questions for, about page three? <clears throat> I'm trying to just go over some of the lines that have any, you know, any significant changes yeah. to them. Uh, communication telephone, a uh, little bit of an increase. Uh, just keep it in mind that th that line, we do not have a contract with AT&T. We never have. Uh, we have an aging telephone, tele telephone system. Um, it just says at, at some point uh, we're really going to have to address that. Um, Communication cell phones. We discussed this last year. For the ones that, are, that were on the board last year, we discussed this. Uh, there's a line in animal control uh, that we, were, we had gone back and forth, you know, whether we should have their cell, cell phones on our account or, or just keep them separate. Uh, this past year, I actually just put them on our account, got them two cell phones, put them on our account. It's just much easier for me to keep track of, of the cell phones. So all the cell phones that are associated with the police department as well as the, the animal control or, or all on our account. So when you when we get to their their budget, you'll see that it's just it's it's zero. Um, any any questions regarding those? Also, another increase associated with the cell phones is that we we're starting to use smartphones a little bit more. Um, this past year, we we added a smartphone to uh, the detective bureau uh, when they respond to you know, whether mostly bank robberies in our town. Um, they can send that information to the FBI, through them, to the paper. Uh, if they have a suspect that they're looking for that they got a picture on, uh, it's, it's not one of those where they, they take the picture, they get it from the, the bank, and they go back to headquarters, and they, they get on a computer, and they, they sit, and they decide that they're going to send it to, you know, to you know, the register or, or, or this station, that station. Right now, everything can be done right from the field. They do it right from the cell phone. Uh, much more efficient. Um, Training, professional development training. Um, it's just another one of those lines that uh, needs to be increased. Uh, we're seeing a, a, a bigger cost associated with training. Uh, the academy right now, um, I, I don't think I went over it as, as, as far as uniforms. Like Sergeant McCarthy had said, I'm, I'm jumping around here a little bit, but as Sergeant McCarthy said, we have 10 officers that, are, that could retire tomorrow. Uh, and that's a pretty critical number in a small department like ourselves if they decided to leave for any particular reason. Uh, when, you, when you get to the professional development training, in, in training officers right now, it costs us to send people to the academy, which it didn't in the past. There's a $1,500 flat fee just to send them to the academy, and they're, they're charging them with, for, us, for everything now uh, that is associated with that training. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, take care of, you know, any type of shortages is related to that. Um, as we go through page six, most of them are just costs. Gas, gas, oil, and tires is 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 kind of like that that cost of doing business. The price of gas has gone up. Uh, I tried to explain it, you know, like I said, in, it, most of, your, hopefully your answers would be explained in, in my summary here. I tried to take out what, what exactly causes that high amount of money or, or any type of decrease. You would see it kind of right on my explanation. Basis, how much does this cost per year? Pardon? You're asking for $84,000 for the year gas. So when you look at it on a, you know, per patrol car basis, what does that come out to be? Well, like I said here, the, the average gallon gallons used in a month is 1869 mm -hmm. Um <coughs> times the cost of gas, correct, Tony? Yeah. It would be $3 in, in, in uh, yeah. roughly 18 cents. And then you compute that out, and you can see that, you know, times the 12 vehicles, I mean, we're talking $71,000. We still have to worry about oil, which is a high cost. And then we, we also, you know, under this, we also have to worry about replacement of tires, snow tires every year. Uh, I mean, we do a good, my, our mechanic does an excellent job 
as far as rotation and saving us money in that respect. Because at the end of the year, when, a lot of times when we, we don't take the, sm the snow tires off the cars, we let them run until, you know, we have to take them off because of safety, and then they, they replace them with that. So we're, we're, we're constantly trying to save money as far as uh, the maintenance and repairs of the vehicles, and, and that's just one area that where they, we try to save in that, in that line. Hopefully I, I answered the question. Um, the uh, electrical, that's associated with the, the <coughs> although we do not budget for it, uh, the cost down at uh, 125 Bradley Road, we, which we are in the process of moving that repeater. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a repeater down at 125 Bradley Road that is part of our radio system. Um, we have a, a, a project right now that's going on. That we're moving that to the AT&T Tower on, um, on Litchfield Turnpike. Uh, once that move is made, uh, that'll save us $611 a month. Uh, I do not budget for that, uh, that but it, it, it is shows in projected house-wise. It does come out of my budget. Uh, Capital machinery, we're looking to re replace uh, some sh a shredder, actually two shredders. And then capital furniture, it's, it's, a, it's a desk for one of our sergeants, uh, a desk and chair. Mm. It just got to a point where we can't reuse what we already have. You know, some, of the, 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 some of the equipment that I have is just falling apart. Any questions? I believe you. <laughs> We're trying to make it work over there. In terms of the holiday pay increase, so you mentioned that there's step increases and Correct. then um, contractual obligations. <clears throat> are there more holidays now that are being covered? Than no, no, board? that's the same number. No, that just comes out to that. Actually, we, we questioned that, didn't we? we? We actually questioned that when I. Because that's I came like up over 25% increase just for well, holiday pay. I it doesn't compute for me in terms of. Let me. Well, I I looked at it and I said too. Is it that much of an increase? Or maybe you have a, you have a different look at it, Tony. But when you when you say there's ten officers that are. It's typically part of the review that we'll do. Yeah. Right. And I'll, I'll check okay. that figure. But that'll be. Um, the other thing that we'll do is uh, we'll we'll go out to bid for gas, diesel, at some point and shortly, okay. and we'll also verify that figure. Okay. And. Um, a couple of there's a couple of places, but that's one that I usually check those anyway. There's a spreadsheet that we have that I'll, I'll verify for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So I think we all understand the SRO officer in that's been consistent. Yes. Correct. What's the change now at Beecher? Kenny Lynch is going to be staying there for the whole year. Full time. When, when, when we, school is in session. We usually have him back like May, beginning of May. Now he's staying there. So as opposed to going there as he was teaching their classes, now he's going to be he's going to be there all on duty. Yes, Dare is a 12-week program. Just so you know, um, that he would have been he would have been assigned there, and mostly he would have been over there probably during the the whole day. <coughs> but that extends his his responsibilities at the school much greater than we anticipated. What is the officer's availability? We needed them. We got them. Oh, anytime. We have them. Yeah. Yes. We've we've pulled both the SRO as well as well as uh, Officer Lynch from from the schools when we when we needed them, and and you know after the presentation that the sergeant is giving, you can understand where we're. I mean, we're. Um, I figured it out that prior to our shortage, we, it was probably about 20 percent of the time that we had two officers on the road. So that could have been a sergeant and an officer, or two officers. Uh, depending on you know what the 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 officers that were assigned to the shift, uh, I, I told the lieutenant to look into the future uh, because of the shortage, and that's probably going to increase into about a 50 percent. So 50 percent of the time in the town of Woodbridge, you're going to have two officers working the road uh, because of the shortage that we have. Uh, that's pretty pretty significant. I mean, we do the job and we do it very well doing that. But but like I said, there's there's issues that. You should know about them, and we we address. 
No, not yet, yet. That's where it begins. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, I, I, I thank you, Wade, for allowing us to, to you know, just bring it to the attention of this board tonight for our presentation. How often does Officer Lynch get pulled from Beecher? Um, I, I don't think it's that often. Uh, but, but like I said, if you have two officers on the road and we had a bank robbery and we needed assistance down in the flats, I mean, we have, I think we have eight banks now. Uh, we have, you know, we have a good percentage of bank robbers. Then, if we, that would be just a, a, uh, an example, okay. you, we would pull them for that, you know, to, to search the area. You know, it could be for an hour, it could be a good free for, you know, the rest of the day. And at the end of his presentation, uh, Sergeant McCarthy mentioned that you're making a request for one additional officer. We will be. We will be. Yes, you will. 2014, 2015. Okay. Uh, like I said, I think that's. It was our opportunity to open the door. Uh, I spoke to the you know, finance director about it in, in, in the past. Uh, you know, we, we saw that you know th these unforeseen things that have happened throughout the last several months. You know, are losing our IT tech. We have to provide a, you know, an officer to do a, a lot of that work that we we knew had to be done. Everything's that's computers today. For, that's the reason for the hire, okay. because of our officer, our sergeant now is doing our RT work, IT work. Okay. But you're making the request for 1450, not 1314? 1450. 1450. Yeah. That's where the request would come in. Okay. Like we, well, like, why like not I said, now then? I'm asking. If the, if the need is now, why not ask for it now? That's what I'm asking. Well, that would, be, that would be something that maybe you should, you know, sit down and talk about and, and, and come back. We'll bring it up like, like the first like we said, we'll bring it up with our commission. Uh, it wasn't an approved budget. Because of the timeliness of the incidents that have, have occurred, you know, we had our budget approved on, on the 12th of December. I can't come in here on, on this date and, and, and tell you that something that hasn't been approved with them, and that goes right with, with uh, Mr. Sheehy saying, we have to go over it with our, with our, our board. Uh, but I, I felt that it was something that you should know, you know, so it's not a surprise that you, you have an opportunity to talk about it, you know, in the next, in the months to come. If you make a decision and talk to the, the uh, you know, to the Board of Police Commissioners that there's a need now. I mean, I, I could understand that. I mean, you could see the need, it's just, but next year there's no doubt that you, you will see a request. So following up on the potential retirement. Okay. Correct. Ten, ten, are, ten are qualified to retire. In the Correct. next several years. Oh, the next several years. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. What are, what are the not in 2014. In, in the next fiscal probably, year. Probably, probably There's ten. Five. Next in the next two two years. Okay. Did they, is there is there a uh, a time frame that they have to let you know? In other words, I'm thinking if four or five or and also no. they drop a bomb no. on you. No. You, you don't you don't replace them tomorrow. It's not like replacing no. a truck. No, no there's no timeline on it. So then you'd be short while these guys. Maybe we to just lost Lawrence Rooney. Right? Rooney. Lawrence Rooney just went to an, a, another department. Rooney then? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And we won't be able to replace him logistically until probably April. We'll have a list. All right. He, you know, if we replace him with somebody that's not a certified officer, he'll have to go to the academy. There's, you know, 27 weeks there. Then he's got to come back for, you know, 400 and some hours of, of uh, uh, training with an FTO. So we probably won't see another officer certified out on the road by himself. But that's close if you to hire Christmas next year. To go through the exactly. Oh, absolutely. Exactly. Hire somebody who's already certified. Paid. Correct. And we're going to bring that up at the board of police commissioners this next meeting too. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Minimal control. <coughs> Which is tab 1250 for a very well publicized animal control. Where was that? Where's the thing? Where's my helicopter? Just, I just want to yeah. explain a little bit about animal control before you begin. Um, the uh, budget you'll see there of um, one fifteen three nineteen. That's our portion. Oh, okay. The second page is the complete budget. Okay, that's which is two ten eight nineteen. So you'll see, and then further on in the document, when you see the revenues, you'll see it broken down by the three towns that are involved. Just so. You get a feel for how the documents flow here. So you have the it's, uh, one, two, three pages in. You'll see revenue sources 
of which there are three towns and then some miscellaneous fees and donations. Okay, that works. So are there any, I mean, is there anything we should know about the budget, Tony? Is it pretty? <coughs> well, there was the, the difference there? between last year and this year. Now, is our share going down? Our share goes down. Because we have Derby on Cor board Correct. Now? Derby, as I was going to say, we added Derby. <coughs> the difference between last year and this year is the addition of additional town. Yeah. Which means you'll see a few items go up, like some part-time um, employee time <coughs> and um, some veterinary expenses and things that are <coughs> um, perhaps likely to go up one reason being an additional town, but uh, you'll see our portion goes down by 10% right. because of the town. Mm -hmm. So that's just sort of the dynamics of the additional um, additional town being involved. So Tony, do, do we approve the entire budget or just our share? How does, how does that You'd work? approve the whole budget because yeah. the town of Woodbridge yeah. runs the whole we, operation. We contract with we Bethany contract and Derby with for these services. At those numbers, right? They contract with us. They contract with us, right? So that's well, the, well, <laughs> yeah, we're the driving war on the contract. <laughs> so you, you may think that way, but I think we contract with them. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, so okay. that you know that there, right? So that there's a change to the budget. It would reflect our portion because their portion is as indicated in the revenue section. So again, dealing with staffing again. We have two full-time officers. We have two full-time uh, employees who handle day-to-day -day operations. At what point do you get involved, and how often do you, do you get involved? I, you know, I, I think you know. You're talking. You have two guys on the road. We're going to send somebody from Mandel off in Derby. You know, that's not exactly the. I, I thought this might. Hey, buddy. I thought this might go. <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you where I get involved, and, and where it's stressed on the, in the police department. We try not to get involved in their operation of handling the animals other than th this past incident. Uh, what's, it, what's important to the budget handling is to know where the money's being spent and to ha have accountability on where it's spent. Um, I mean, I can, I can come on veterinary services. What we've tried to do is we've tried to do POs that, that allow us to know what money's coming in and what money's being spent. That's an area where, you know, you, you really have to take, you, you have to have, take control of it. All right, because there's so many little facets. As you go down the the, their, the budget, and this, this is where the police department really was, I think, was asked to take over, so they would have more accountability and, 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 and control it. I mean, up in the contractual area, obviously overtime. I think last year you saw it that we just completely took overtime away, other than then that was necessary. I mean, the overtime right now is, is associated with them being called out after hours, whether it be in Bethany, Orange, or I mean Bethany, Woodbridge, or, or Derby. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I hope I'm answering the question, Matt, because I mean, you just look through these lines. I mean, it's the, the maintenance on the vehicles. Uh, you have to keep track on that. Um, that's where the police department has a strong role in, in what goes on down there. Uh, the, the repair and the maintenance of the building. Uh, I mean, if, if you look at it, these, these are not issues that are animal control issues. These are issues that are they, they're, they're logistically involved in the running of it. Uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, food and supplies, uh, supplies for, for, for paperwork. Uh, I, I had actually, you know, made some lists, um, uh, you know, I mean, off supplies, electrical, <coughs> gas, and telephone. Um, I mean, I, I, I have to have the bills and I have to, you know, pay those bills. Uh, the waste associated with down there. Uh, yeah, I think again, the question is more in terms of the police officer from Woodbridge go out to Derby to pick up the No, they don't. They don't. Well, these ACOs work normal business hours? <coughs> they, bo they both have different hours. One works 7 to 3, the other one works 11 to 7. Mm -hmm. 11 and, that, to 7. and that's where the overtime was cut down. Okay. 11 to 7 in the evening? Correct. 11 in the morning to 7. 11, 7 in the night. morning until 7 in the evening. And the other one works? 7, 7 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. So they overlap. They stagger the shift. So you're so you're without an officer from seven to seven. 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 Other than their days off. Right. <clears throat> so if there's a crazy occurrence with an animal, you have to get involved. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that would be the very order. often. I mean. No. 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 Okay. Could happen once or twice a week. Yeah. I mean, no, no, not there is a need there for all three towns. But it's not stressing the department. That doesn't. No. Work. Not us. No. Okay. <laughs> Other things are stressing us, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
And so, you know, and like I think Mr. Genovese would agree, it's, it's a work in progress. It's, it's very difficult. Wow. <laughs> or Tony. Okay. Any questions on animal control? Who's doing EMS? Oh, I can do that later. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that later. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to give us something about capital tone? There is a request for an additional defibrillator. Oh, okay. by the EMS. Put in the town facility. I think it's a hard part request. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay. What's that? That's the 2300. Uh, Joe, that's true. No. Yeah. Um, Joe is, a, is an liaison to the EMS commission. He'd be able to answer these questions. <coughs> He is. Oh, he's in these interviews. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll ask okay. him about yeah. that. Yeah. All right. So. So now, what's the story with the building maintenance, Karen? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. So we'll do uh, pool and gym and capital, oh, and that is Adam. No, no, no. Brad. 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 <laughs> I know the difference. I didn't know who. I, I forget. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the Parsons. I didn't know I was next. <laughs> we didn't either. Huh? Right, pool, gym, and capital is fifteen fifteen. All right. Oh, this will be quick. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi. 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 Uh, it doesn't look like there's much other than uh, contractual. yeah, contractual. Contractual. That's it. Okay. Make do with what I have. Doing a good job. And those new lockers have been installed at the uh, already installed. School. It's great. Oh, that was done. I know last time we met. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really nice. nice. That's a long time. Yeah. Really Brad nice. did that. Um, okay. Any questions about the pool and gym? And capital. What's the capital? There's a reserve of five thousand oh, dollars okay. for the pool and gym. Pool and gym a pool reserve for okay. the repairs. Okay. You good with that? Yeah, that's the reserve has been there before. Okay. It's very handy in case of a filter failure or really handy. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Send in uh, Adam. Is Adam in Parks? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Parks is 1520. Is it my turn? No, it's Adam. No. That's Adam. Oh, yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Adam, why don't you just go over these? Uh, you got a number of salary increases, not, 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 yeah. not the regular one, but there's a 200% increase in overtime. And we'll start off with increases on uh, part time seasonal. This is, uh, I have uh, two college kids that work for me, and I'd like to eliminate one of them and have one put more time in, start in April and end in October. Because right now a college kid is uh, <coughs> is useless to me. You know, they're here they're here almost in June and they're gone in you know, August. That's I'm too busy for that now. So I need I, I need more help. It's just not enough uh, manpower for me. Okay. That's in regard to the organic program? Is it is, but it's also that? with the tournament play. In other duties that I just it seems like I've got more work than not enough people um, so the next line item is overtime I don't know if you understand this but uh, the ball field tournaments on the weekends a lot of them so that involves overtime and that's where that comes in a lot of it and also snow removal on the sidewalks <coughs> we have a person come in take care of that, that's overtime, so that's just not enough money to cover that. Yeah, I, 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 
It is. Do they charge fees for that? I, mean, I don't know that okay. you'd have to ask. Uh, yeah, we'd have to ask that because if they're collecting a significant fee to play in the tournament, yep. you know, maybe some of that should be allocated to us for the overtime to maintain the fields. I know when I when I was involved, you know, these tournaments cost three, four hundred dollars to get into. So, um, well, also if there's a cost there, whatever. Oh yeah, there is, it yeah. Should all be allocated. yeah. So as far as getting the fields ready, to get the fields ready for our kids, that's one thing. But if you're committed right. to a tournament, no, right. you'd have to try ask, ask uh, Dwight or yeah. John. Yeah, John might know. The Recreation Commission might know. Okay. okay. Um, but the buyback sick is uh, contractual. Uniform allowance. I just need more money to cover, you know, safety gloves and uh, so on and so forth, safety boots and stuff to keep us safe. Um, the rentals of equipment. That's our porta potties, and the increase in that is because of the tournaments. Yeah. Well, we have to. Yeah. I mean, we're bearing all the costs for this. We are. Yeah, we got to talk about that. All right. Uh, the next one down the line would be the maintenance supplies, and this increase is because of the organic fertilizers and other aspects to it. And you knew that. And this is the understand. There's no fluff in this at all. It is what it is. These are just normal organic or fertilizer program. That I'm not adding things on. The exhort. You know, it's out of the question. And going down the line, the, um, the increase in vehicle parts and supplies um, for our pickups. We just need more money in that line item. Um, just buying tires. We had transmission rebuilt. It's, it's big bucks. It drains that, that line item really quick. Not, not to mention the filters and you know normal uh, maintenance. <coughs> um, that's the increases in the, the bottom of the page is the capital machinery. I, I need a rototiller, I need an edger. And there's a piece of equipment out there that does this. And I need this because we're doing it by hand and I can't keep up with it. I can't control it with weed control because of the organics. I, I could spray vinegar on it, but I have to be a slave to spraying vinegar on it. And I do and it sets it back but in two weeks it's growing back and it seems like it's growing back <coughs> stronger than ever um it stunts it and then it loves it um he thinks it's salad <laughs> it's it's incredible Put the oil on it then <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> olive oil with <laughs> so this piece of equipment is a must i've got to have this piece of equipment or i can't it's just labor and to keep up with edging a ball field is impossible so this machine is an edger and a rototiller, but I need an edger. This edger and ro the, the road the edger itself would cut the edge first, and this machine would make it easier for start go in the edger groove, and then it rototills about six inches out, and then I could run the rototiller on our tractor along the edge. <clears throat> I can't have a defined line between you know the weeds and the grass and the clay. It's just I, it's machine is a must. What is the cost of that machine? It's $44,000, $4,050. And that would do all the ball fields repeatedly every, really every three weeks during the growing season. Because if you let it go by and the weeds take over like a few of the ball fields have, it's, it's impossible without this machine. Um, 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 next one down the line is the tennis courts, windscreen. We have this, the screening on the, the road side, and there's been interest in putting it on the other side for the wind to help the tennis players. You know, the balls don't blow around. That's uh, $2,000. And the next one is the replacement of the stone dust on the warning track at Acorn Hill Ball Field. This warning track is more soil than it is stone dust. So I'm rototilling it, but I can't control the edges of it because I don't have that edger machine. So I need to put stone dust in to keep the weeds down. It's like a, it's like a flower bed. I'm just rototilling the weeds, and two weeks later, bingo, the weeds are up already. So I need to get that soil out of there and replace it with something that <laughs> doesn't grow weeds very well. 
and that's what that is. Um, if you could just go over that part-time seasonal increase one more time. Okay. Um, so it says here you've got, you mentioned something about going, yeah, that you have two college age folks now. Yep. And this is for an additional person? No, you eliminate one of the college okay. individuals and hire a person starting in April and ending in October versus the college kids. It's almost in June and he leaves in the end of August. That's like... So now you have two folks and you want to, you want to increase the three? No, I just want to increase the amount of time of an individual. Of one of them. Okay. That's all. That's all. <coughs> you had three, but now you want to substitute one who's available from April to October. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because I'm, come spring, I'm, I'm crazy. It's just it's not enough. And I don't have the, the kids come. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's, there they are, and it's, it's like, you know, a little too late. So that's where that comes in. And I have someone in mind, somebody who would fill that position. So that's only fifteen dollars an hour. Okay, anything else? That's it. Good. Thanks. Thank you. All right, guys. Are you going to create the That's your department. I'll do in your budget. Well start pushing stuff off on me. <laughs> 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 Okay, John, while you get set up, we just have a question for, for Dr. Hellauer. We were, we were wondering about the defibrillator. Yeah, I'm yeah, that additional defibrillator that is requested. Good luck, John. Where's that guy? Do you need me? No. No. We've not finalized where it's going. So, yeah. It'll be a board of selection <coughs> decision. Right. The primary <coughs> candidate, because of the population they're in, would be that. That would be the most logical one. Okay, next is recreation, and that's tab 1510. And uh, would you like to highlight anything in particular, sir? Well, the only thing I'd really like to highlight is security. Um, due to the, the fact what happened in Newtown, we started a security system over there. We have a, when recreational programs are uh, in progress during the school day and the children are still there, we provide a security person at the door, and no doors are no longer just left open. And we, uh, you know, swipe everybody in that belongs. We ask who they are, like this, and we bring them into the program. And that was for um, like fourteen thousand four hundred dollars to cover cover us for the afternoon programs. But I was talking with Dr. Stella. We open up a program early in the morning, early bird swim. The school is open. People are out. The doors are open. People could possibly sneak in before school starts, hide themselves within the school. So we're starting this Thursday, placing the person, uh, those doors are going to be locked in the morning. So now they're locked 24-7 when kids are in the building. Or before the kids come into the building, the recreation opens up. So we'll have somebody there swiping all the swimmers, because no longer do any card keys work for anybody other than administration at the school, at the recreation department. So that's what we're going to be doing. So that's another 7200 but I don't have it in the budget. But... We could work on it somehow, some way, to, to get it in. But that's a, that will be full security, so that when recreation programs are in progress and school is still in session, uh, we have the doors covered. And they have the north covered, and we have the south covered. Like that. That's basically the largest thing that, that we put in. Uh, and under the six-year capital budget, uh, one of the things was a vestibule. If you were at Antonio's this year, you saw the nice, beautiful. We have a twenty-seven dollar thousand dollar one put in like this I think we could reduce that to like six thousand dollars we can drop that down to like six grand because they put in a beautiful one exactly what we would like it's temporary it hooks up to the building if you move you can just take it right down put it back up and it covers both winter and summer so that would be perfect for us we'd, we'd like to do that and have that changed also on the capital we have the uh, oh, yeah. online registration we like to make that addition to rec track uh, the web track uh, you know, to make it more convenient for our customers to, to register for programs. Um, the parking over there at Beecher is crazy. They have to park way down on the hill to come up and register. And, you know, I'm only there 8 to 4. So this way people can register in the evening uh, and have more access to, to registration with our programs. And then before what I was talking about when, when Adam was here, 
Uh, the skating rink is just being used. It's, 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 it's great. It's unbelievable. Uh, we're getting much use out of that. But it does have cracks in it. We're trying to, we tried to seal it up the best we could. Adam couldn't get to it. He didn't have the money in his budget. He didn't have the material. And if we're not going to change it, I'd like to I'll put it in the budget. It's in the six-year capital budget for 2015. To, and I don't know if that's correct price, but that's to build a, um, a cement, reinforced cement, six-inch reinforced cement. And I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. I'd like to make it you know, towards the parking lot another 30 feet and maybe go out another 50 feet um, towards the cornfield, which is not uh, wetlands or anything like that. It's just like that. Or we just keep it the same size, but build it correctly so we don't lose the water. Because that's what happens. It, it, it's black. We can't paint it because the paint won't adhere to it because they sealed it with an oil oil based sealer and no paint will adhere to it. And when the sun hits it, it heats up and it melts at one end. But um, I was watching uh, the History Channel on how to how to do Zamb oh, I want a Zamboni bad, but we're not going to get one. But <laughs> they, they were showing how to fix holes in the, in the skating rink, and I had a hole about two two feet wide and went right down to right down to the base. And the guy said, all you do is take snow, you put it in a bucket, you add water to it, mix it up, and you make a snow pack, and you put it in, you pack it down, you let it freeze for about an hour, and then you pour water on it. It worked. I was amazed like this. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, if we can get it, if we can, maybe if we can't get, uh, like this year coming up for next year like this, and maybe down the road we, we, we change it over to cement and do the correct thing to have it, because you got to see it over there. I, at night, I allow no hockey on it until at night. So the kids are really good, and they come Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday night. I put the lights on. They can come 8.30 to 10, and they can use the skating rink, and they go out there and play, the older kids. And then the younger kids will skate all day, and then they have from 4, 4.30 when it gets dark, till 8.30. And they're there all the time. And it's only six, and people love it because it's only six inches deep at the deepest part. If you fall through, which I've done about a dozen times, your foot gets soaked. It's always my right foot. I don't know why. But uh, that... It's great, and so I think if we can maybe next year help Adam and do something within the budget or within our budget to just seal the cracks like they do in driveways and roads and stuff, just seal those cracks up like that and put a sealant on it, and then down the road look to change that over because it is, it is a something that we could really use for the town of Woodbridge for the kids, and it's, uh, it's so simple to maintain. And that's bas basically it. Our budget is basically the same. Uh, I brought Dave Cohen, this is my uh, su weekday supervisor, to come just to you know, talk to you a little bit about the weekday program on how our programs have, have picked up, all of our programs, and uh, we're doing fine. We're, we're doing really good, and, and uh, Dave would tell you a little bit about the weekday if you like. Yeah, we have all kinds of programs, not only athletic programs. We have a cake decorating program, we have an arts and crafts program, we have a little scientist program, we have a world dance program. Chess. Chess. Yes. Uh, we tried Legos. We had Legos in the summer. Mm. It was great. We had a magician, but we just couldn't get a magic uh, another magician. You get to sign up for something. So we just try them. Yeah. We did a big marketing program for all the daycare centers in Hamden. And I went to Hamden, Orange, well, Milford, and Woodbridge. Gave a free trial for gymnastics and move masters on Saturday. And yeah, we're full. It's a good pick up a couple people. people like that. Yeah. So we're marketing our programs. Yeah. We go to all the schools, the private schools in New Haven, deliver flyers to the Hebrew schools, to St. Aidan's. So our programs are out there. Yeah. To everybody. And it's showing. Our, our, our programs are picking up. Our, it's nice to see on, on a Saturday that we're full. We have a, we have a Tuesday night full program. We now have a Thursday night full program of basketball for the kids. So we have full two night programs. Saturday program, what we did was we invited the kids to come for a nominal fee of $20, come play on Saturday. We have a full Saturday program in the gym at Center School Gym. So, so we're full. And by marketing and letting kids come for a little bit less price, uh, it helps. In the, this economy is so tight and so hard for people to come. And we do scholarship a lot of people. If people come and they have a hardship, you know, we're there for them. We'd rather see the kids, you know, play, you know, and be there than not be there at all. And that's that's where we're at. And we let them try it first. If they don't yeah. like it, we let them try it. If they don't yeah. like it. Yeah. And we also prorate our programs. Some people come in and say, you know, three, four weeks into a program, they see it, they hear from their friends like this, and they say, oh, we'd like to sign up. And then we say to them, well, you know, you don't have to pay the full price. We figure out what it costs for the final, you know, the eight weeks or seven weeks of the program, and we just charge them for those seven weeks and not, not the whole program itself. It helps everybody in the long run like that 
And I heard from Dr. Stella that um, from the Board of Education that we're, we're going to be able to be at Beecher Road School this summer. We're going to be able to run our summer program, so we'll have our full summer program. So I'm getting ready. I'm starting to get some real dress up stuff. <laughs> Someday I want to come out there and be an accountant. <laughs> That was your car. I know. I still have a flower on my car. <laughs> and that's basically it. That's basically what we have. Okay. Any questions for John? Did they ever investigate putting the vestibule inside rather than going in rather than going out? Oh, sure. You have a square square footage of about 400 feet, and the vestibule takes up 200 feet, so that gives me up 200 feet. And like all that area is yeah, no, it's 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 about what 600 feet. That's, that's I, all it is. I think it's only 600 feet in the end. But we use the middle of our office. It would come into the middle of the office. It would have to come in so far by regulations by state law. And in the middle of the office, we have two tables, and we do arts and crafts. We do cake, cake decoration, and, and we use we use every space available that we can that we can and think we're of. We're limited. Sometimes the school takes. Yeah. Up. It's just the nature of the beast. The school, it's their property, it's their building, and they come in and they have to come in with a program. And if they need a program, then we get bumped. And there's not any, there's no room in that building. Yeah, it's 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 just it's just packed. They, it's we use packed. everything, and they and I gotta be honest, Doctor Stella lets you if there's a room open or something like that, or they bump us and he can find a room, he puts us in there. He lets us go there, and we share. And a couple of times when we had to go to Beecher North, when Beecher South had their big assembly, their big uh, holiday uh, concert or something like this. We shared with Beecher North after school program, and we invited all Beecher North school after school programs to be in our program, to come in and play basketball if they wanted with us, and they did. We had about a dozen kids from his program come up there and share the gym that day and be part of our program. We put them on teams, and we played together. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we need the office because we'll have four programs running. We'll have a program in the gym, a program in South Assembly, and we'll need our, our rec office as that extra yeah, classroom. Extra so over. we do need the space. We'd love to try a cooking class, but we don't have the space for that. We would get great numbers for that. Yeah, you could tell by the size of us. Look at the other three of we like to cook and eat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Matt, a great one. I had I had the second little TIA, little stroke I did, and I'm sitting on, on the gurney, and the doctor's talking to me, and the doctor goes to me, he says, well, John, he says, i got to be honest with you. He said, this time, you may have lost a little bit of memory. And Kathy walks, my wife walks through the gate like this. I look, and I go, not today, doc. There's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so i got to wear pants. Okay. I'm sorry, so. And now we've got a bunch of different ones. Where, where are we going, Carol? You tell me. The only maintenance is still on hold. The only maintenance is on hold, so should we do Darling House? Country Club? Darling House? Which is, which is longer? I want to make uh, Darling House later. How long is yours? Uh, Very short. Let's let them, 20 let them, 20 let them, let them go. All right. <coughs> You're going to see a little history tonight because I think this is the first time we've had a yeah, right. PowerPoint presentation from Darling House. First time we've ever had that. Great. Well, right. it's not much. Uh, but no. Is it the original? Well, I'm Marvin Aaron. Just show people that have been there, what it looks like. I'll just give you some background here. Let's go. Yeah, this is the original one. 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 Yeah, this is the I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm representing the uh, Amity Woodbridge Historical Society and as town historian, I'm also representing the town. And I just wanted to give you a little background that we're getting ready, because this is a very historic house on Litchfield Turnpike. And I just want to read you something so you'll understand. Uh, this is the only historic house in Woodbridge that has its original contents, many valuable American decorative arts and paintings. The David Beecher House on Beecher Road was built in 1751 
The Thomas Sanford House on Sanford Road was built in 1769, and the Thomas Darling House was built between 1772 and 1774. I don't know why it took two years, but the architect had come from Hartford. Then the Hezekiah Baldwin House was built in 1782. The Theophilus Baldwin House, also on Baldwin Road, was built in 1782 also. The Abner Baldwin House, the Baldwin houses all survived, 1785. And the Henry Baldwin House on Wepawag Road, 1787. The, the Baldwin name actually persisted at the uh, Darling House because the last occupant, Sila Baldwin, really was a stepdaughter. She was not a DNA Baldwin. But she did leave the, uh, the contents of the house to the Amity Woodbridge Historical Society, 1973, and she left the house itself and 100 acre, 118 acres or so, which you all rent out for farming needs uh, that, f to the town. And so we're ca caretakers of the house. And um, uh, Thomas Darling, there's a biography of Thomas Darling. We're not here to give you that information, but it, 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 this is an historic presentation, really, uh, with historic restoration. And Thomas Darling was born in 1720. He died in 1789. I have to describe him to you uh, he was a Tory, and he was also uh, what they call an old light, believing as a Congregationalist that uh, only the ministers had divine privileges from God. Um, he dealt with, uh, he ran against uh, Roger Sherman for mayor of New Haven and lost by a huge margin. <laughs> and I would tell you that I suppose today you would call Darling a um, Tea Party guy. And of course, we know that uh, Baldwin, I mean, that you know that Sherman signed all the four documents. So he was a revolutionary and probably uh, would be a Democrat. Um, he was, Darling was a businessman. He was into everything you could think of, in ships and in insurance. Uh, he bought things on credit. He even went up to near Fort Ticonderoga to peddle uh, all kinds of rum and cloth and clothes. Unfortunately, for all his dealings, he died insolvent. And the family had to uh, sell some of the land off because it was much bigger than what was left. And finally, he, I just wanted to finish up so we can, uh, Leland Torrance can go ahead with the restoration and the budget. Um, he had two slaves, and he set them free right at the time of the Revolutionary War. I just, as an interest, if you set a slave free in Connecticut, and Connecticut abolished slavery in 1848, rather late, but you had to get permission from the state to, to free your slaves because they didn't want them to become a burden on the state. So you had to write for permission. So that's just a little introduction to the house. And I passed a little uh, brochure out about the house. And I hope you come and visit. Well, thank you. Very thank you. Um, my name is Leland Tarns, and. Uh, Marvin uh, had roped me into the new, what is now the New Haven Museum, which is uh, the New Haven, used to be the New Haven Colony and Historical Society. And now he's roped me into doing this, and I've fallen in love with the house. Um, it really is a, an amazing gem in terms of almost everything being peri correct period wise. Uh, I've been restoring buildings. Um, uh, for 35 years, but we're, everything we're doing here, I'm just overseeing and uh, volunteering, is done to Secretary of Interior Standards, uh, which are which is required by the National Park Service um, for landmarks. That, so we're 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 trying to uh, care for this in the best way we can. But I have to say, I, I it, Don Menzies wanted to express and. We both feel we're so thankful you guys are 
starting to put some uh, money into conserving and saving this house uh, because the historical society on its own just can't do it. Um, so I will s just quickly, um, we've taken care of all sorts of safety things, uh, gone over the electrical system with monies you guys have given in the past. Um, I don't know how many people have been down there, so I just, I'm going to quickly run through some slides so you can get a flavor of it. And as Marvin said, we hope you'll all come down. This is uh, the front porch after it was painted. Um, it is lead paint, so everything's done in an RRP by licensed um, uh, lead abatement people. And very important that the front entrance doesn't have a lot of friable lead. There, we, there are a number of programs with kids that go down there. Um, again, the front porch with the new, well, it's a little dirty, but new paint on the bottom. Uh, that's sort of what it looks like in, uh, in progress. That's what it looks like. Uh, after it's completed. Uh, this is proposed for um, on the budget coming up this year uh, to um, wet sand and encapsulate this uh, e south side of the building and restore the dormers. Looks beautiful from here, but you know this is the kind of condition that you actually see. Um, the, it's definitely the point now where we're, we're, it, we're at the point where if we don't take care of this, we're gonna begin to have more wood rot and more carpentry expense and restoration. Um, again, uh, Colin done this uh, last fall and how it looks now. Uh, these are some interior shots just to give you a little flavor. Uh, we Much of the first floor <coughs> was painted this year uh, with funds from the Historical Society and all of the ceilings, with the exception of the living room and the whole house, were done on the funds that you guys allocated last year. And that includes plaster work, uh, prepping, and all the ceilings are hand painted, brush painted the way they would have been um, in uh, the 18th century. Uh, dining room, detail of one of the uh, tiles. This is what happens if you don't get money. Uh, this is uh, Ed's great great grandfather. <laughs> it's just some shots to show you what's in there and the general condition of the interior, which has been, uh, you know, I think pretty lovingly restored. You'll see. It's interesting, those paintings are of the Clarks, some of the Clark family, just as a background. This room, all the ceiling was done a year ago, and uh, the trim and stuff was done with uh, historical society money uh, this fall. This is uh, the room we would like to do um, this with this budget, if you guys allocate funds for it. Uh, there's, as you can see, the walls are in pretty bad shape. Uh, the, all of this stuff was moved from another room that we did, the interior, uh, but all the plaster and the, we're proposing all the plaster and the windows uh, be restored. This is uh, damage sustained in the ice storm a few years ago. Uh, that's the condition of the walls and the plaster, so there's really quite a bit of work to be done. So that's it for the slides. Tony, did you have the, are we supposed to present the? If you don't have an extra copy, we can certainly give you one. Yeah, if you have those out of Did you bring them? Um, what we're working off of is, is what I don't have here, what you don't have here is we did a five-year plan uh, two years ago. And so we're, we sort of shift the scope of work. I've been trying to meet sort of a $14,000 line item price for this, which is something that uh, Tony and I had talked about. Uh, this budget is a little more, but I'll just quickly go through it. I know you have, you're busy with a lot of things. Um, the, uh, we had all the, the flus inspected uh, this year. Um, we use one of the chimneys during tavern nights and special events uh, as a fireplace, just a hearth, and the other one is a large uh, cook. Um, hearth, which um, we actually have one or two events where they, we have colonial dress-up and cooking events. Um, 
So what I'm recommending, and the, I've got the purpose of the work and then the estimated cost, uh, we do have at least one bid, and I have my data that I use for cost estimating to come up with these numbers. Um, main cook chimney, we're recommending we spray ceramic flue sealant in the inside of the chimney. It's used a lot for the cooking, and I, the general inspection shows there's a number of mortar cracks and things like that. This is a relatively new process that is um, very safe and uh, more complete than the old method of trying to go up and repoint and clean uh, the inside of the chimney. It's also less expensive. Um, also at the main cook chimney, uh, repoint behind the lintel, which is the piece of wood that goes all the way across the uh, cook hearth. Uh, repointing is just putting, uh, you know, putting new mortar in where it's, the voids are because you don't want sparks to get in there and uh, ignite the wood. Uh, main cook chimney install cast iron damper does not have a damper in there. Uh, the damper is, uh, is I, uh, the quote we have is 1250. It's about a six foot cast iron damper, but that will pay for itself in two years of energy costs. So I highly recommend we do that. Uh, ton of, you know, cold air going up the chimney at this point. Um, living room chim chimney, uh, thermocrete, the flue, uh, it's basically the same as the ceramic flue sealant. Um, the living room chimney, repoint the back wall. A lot of the mortar's coming out. If we're going to keep using it, I think it should be done. Um, let's see, plaster and painting. We'd like to do that room we showed you. Um, and we've been using um, Vincenzo painting. Uh, he does uh, about a quarter million dollars worth of restoration painting for my company a year and was low bidder for the town hall and also did the first church when we stripped that down to wood. Uh, but he's been very good and generous with the town um, in terms of giving us really, really great um, skilled workers and great prices for the work. Um, if you look at that room, I think you'll know that 2700 bucks is a pretty darn good price. Um, he's thankfully sort of... Um, really likes working with Woodbridge, obviously appreciates being the low bid on these bigger jobs, and uh, I think he's been a good friend to the uh, Historical Society, the Darling House. Um, we'd like to restore that one room, uh, window in that room. Uh, again, Secretary of Series Standard, we will replace the broken glass with 18th century glass, and it needs new glazing. Uh, the sashes have to be taken out, uh, redowled, uh, new uh, Dutchman put in the wood, um, and then the uh, whole frame uh, painted and uh, reinstalled. So that's all it for the interior work. Exterior work we'd like to do uh, where you looked at the front porch there. The pediment above that porch uh, was not done this year and uh, so that would be a thousand dollars. That's uh, stripping down uh, all loose paint, wet paint, putting up a containment, plastic containment. Uh, disposing of the lead uh, debris and painting with two coats of, we're using a linseed oil primer and a paint called Muralo, which is a specialty restoration paint. Uh, the south facade and dormers, including the basement windows, that was that one picture I showed you uh, where you could see all the alligatoring in the paint. Uh, we're predicting we have a little bit of woodwork. Um, if, we, if that's approved, um, I'm actually going to take the hardware to my shop and fix it which is not part of the cost on the doors there and we'll we'll be taking most of the remaining paint off at this point because it's in such bad condition so that includes those dormers um, then sort of the low hanging fruit in terms of the budget if you guys do not see uh, if 22 is going to be too much this year um, the east facade uh, we would put off to the next year, but we were requesting if you guys see fit that we could do um, that side of the building. And then um, all the rest of the building, just touch up. We would just put primer on any of the bare wood and any of the friable paint. It's, you know, sort of a quick stop gap so there's no um, lead paint drop to the ground or flaking. So that's pretty much the budget, and I thank you for letting us present. Any questions? I wanted to point out just so you get oriented.
where you saw the porch, we use that as an entrance for safety reasons. And for people who, with disabled, they come the back door because there are no steps. But the original front door is the south end where you saw those double doors closed. We don't use it because it has the original steps and they're, and they're rough to use. The porch is not original to the house. You could tell that that's a Victorian house you know, style, so that's about 1880, but it didn't have a porch like that at all. But we use it, we didn't pull it down. The other thing I wanted to point out is, and um, I think uh, the first selectman would know this best of anybody with longevity here, that very little has been done to this house through the years. And one of the big things I think that we've done is to have um, Ed and Mr. Genovese come and look at it because they could see what the condition was, and that was a year ago. So for us, that was a very important, you know, visit. You, you know, more important than the president in Las Vegas. Today. <laughs> 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 we didn't have any speakers, but uh, right. we were also there a couple of weeks ago in Leland to yep. see the, these areas the, that he's pointing right. out here. There's no question about this needs to be done. Uh, and, uh, and so some of it has been, you know, it's probably our fault for not doing this earlier, but um, we do have a couple that lives in an addition, it's a house there, and they pay rent, and then, you know, we pay for the insurance, the utilities, the oil, and things like that, so it was maintained fairly well, but it was really the interior and then the exterior, and we're very happy that uh, Leland is going to go from the uh, chairman of the Restoration Committee to actually be on the board of directors now. So we have a professional to do that. I think one of you may have mentioned that all the furniture inside is appropriate for the age of the house. Yes. So that's, and Marvin comes from a background, his father and uncle were antique dealers and uh, he grew up with that. He's very knowledgeable about all this, as you can see. Uh, the next newsletter, which you'll get, uh, I'm writing a monograph on some of the furniture and whether his Philadelphia Windsor chair, Tom's Darling's Windsor chair, came from uh, as a gift from Franklin or perhaps Roger Sherman, but we're looking into that. But we'll leave it as a mystery till the f so you can see in the spring when you read it. <laughs> okay, any other questions? How many visitors come through? We don't have many. They used to be open originally. The, the society was founded in 1936. And we didn't begin meeting there until it became a possession of the town. And we had permission to do that, to use the house and to maintain it. And um, in 1973, we moved in there. And uh, that's when she gave it to the town and died. She actually was the first person that contributed a donation to the Historical Society when it was founded. She gave $5 in 1936. Um, there also is, a, you know, a privy there. There's a pigsty. There's a chicken coop. Across the street, there are old barns also, which have been painted in the past. I don't know who the town rents out the land to all around, but they, they do. We never paid attention to that. One of the things is that the it's uh, not that well a patrolled area we do have a tenant down there there's some extraordinary uh, items uh, art and and uh, furniture Don Manzi's what said he wished he could be here uh, tonight he had a conflict but he's extraordinary he, you know he does everything in a very quiet way but anybody calls him up he gives personal tours even to two or three people I mean, the job he does is really remarkable, and he has a few pet projects with um, fifth graders, I think, at Beecher. And third graders. Third graders, and a few other things that are sort of traditional, uh, but they there aren't a lot of records for the data you're asking about. The tenants are actually, the, yeah. the, 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 she's a, uh, graduate student in architecture at Yale, and the um, her husband. What's his name? Yeah, I forgot what his name. He is. does. He's Mark. a farmer out of Massaro, and he's also got a big organic garden now in the field there. Um, 
He needed our permission and for he, that, as I recall. Yeah, so yeah. Right, do that. Right. So, yeah but he wanted he wanted to put in a plug because he sells stuff. Yeah. No, I, I remember when he was here. And so if the board of selectmen of finance are interested in the tour, we can maybe arrange that. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. It's a great house. It's a real treasure. The only thing we yeah, don't have, and not intending to put it in, is, is we don't have an elevator, which means that you, you couldn't get a state grant it's if you don't accessible. have an elevator. Uh -huh. That's a, you know, whole, <laughs> another kettle of fish. So uh, you can have tours, you know, uh, for disabled people, uh, they have to just stay downstairs. I wanted to tell you that, for the record. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joe, you so why don't you, uh, your budget's a zero percent increase, so why don't you just give us a highlight of what your plans are for the year for the country club. Mm -hmm. The uh, building maintenance department, insofar as the department and also the center building, as you have two um, two uh, forms to look at, is essentially the same as last year, with virtually no increase at all. Um, we're constantly being goaded to squeeze a nickel till the Indian rides on the buffalo, and we're trying to do that. Uh, but <laughs> no, seriously, we've been, uh, this hasn't been a bad year. We've had some problems and we've addressed them when we came to them and uh, we fortunately didn't run out of or go overboard uh, with monies and we don't plan to this year. You might know that uh, uh, there's been a lot going on with respect to gas. Uh, installed in town. Uh, the four burners are installed in the library and the library is now running on gas heat. One of the two big boilers at the center building uh, has its burner installed and with decent luck will be running by the end of the week. So the center building, which can run on one of two boilers, will be on gas, uh, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, we have this building next. All we need to do here is test out the existing piping that's installed. I'll get that certified and uh, Bobby can install the two burners here, which won't take too long and the piping won't be that complicated. So hopefully uh, by the end of next week, maybe the town hall will be online. The police department boiler is going to be a little bit troublesome only because of the tightness of the room that the boiler is located in, but uh, we'll get that one done too. So in another three weeks, hopefully, all of the buildings on the town campus will be running on gas. Um, as far as the, the country club is concerned, we're maintaining that, uh, just uh, making sure that the basic facilities and utilities are kept up as best we can uh, and again no no serious problems there so far so at a point in time with everybody going on gas we're going to have to be dealing with oil tanks correct uh eventually yeah exactly the the uh, the garage at uh, the garage uh, down below the public works garage as soon as we get gas heat here, uh, we'll begin drawing down uh, the two large tanks, the one at the library and also the one at the center building, um, and we'll feed the smaller tank uh, that we installed uh, at the public works garage recently. I think you folks are familiar with that. We took out the uh, or, or we disassociated ourselves from the in-ground 1,000 gallon tank. We have a 330 gallon tank down there now inside the building only because we wanted to get that done to get it off of and uncomplicate the future bid uh, lists, uh, which will soon be going out for the public works garage work. 
and it's also the grounds all been tested so that no contractor could say well we you know we never know what we're going to find in there blah 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 um, that's already been done so we can use uh, this fuel as soon as we're able we'll start pumping the library now because we have a hundred gallon tank we can put on a pickup truck pump that hundred gallons bring it to the garage it takes two trips but we'll get rid of that oil as best we can as we take an awful shellacking if we have to have it pumped out of those tanks. We have to pay them to take perfectly good oil out of those tanks. Mm -hmm. That we want to avoid. Otherwise, uh, referring to remove the tanks or fill them in? Yeah, yeah, we have some time with that. Um, what we're going to do is hopefully fill them in. Uh, we're in the process of looking into their new regulations all the time. Uh, taking the library tank out, for example, or even the one at the center building. The center building tank is a 6,000 gallon tank. Mm -hmm. It would be a significant bit of, of uh, excavation <coughs> to get that tank out of there because when you drive into the library parking lot, when you drive up the driveway mm -hmm. and you get just alongside of the center building, that tank is in the ground alongside of the driveway. Mm -hmm. 6,000 gallon tank is a big tank. So we're looking at procedures to make sure that it's thoroughly clean to meet the DEP mandates, uh, and then we'll fill it in. At least that that's the current plan. That might change, but that's the current plan. Okay, any questions for Joe? Happy New Year all, good Thank to you. see you. Thank you so much. <coughs> We're going to move on to the country club. <coughs>